chapter 7, chapter 7, power, electrical circuit, determine the total power consumption in a series parallel and series parallel circuit. After completing this chapter, you're going to be able to define power as it relates to electric circuits. State the relationship of current and voltage. Solve for power consumption in an electric power, by definition, relates to the rate at which work is being done. Work is done when force causes motion. If some of you are familiar already with power, right, our cars are measured in horsepower. Electric motors uh, sometimes are measured in horsepower. Uh, jet engines are measured in thousands of pounds of thrust, same as rocket engines. All of these are units of measure of power. Now, if we look at this definition, work is done when a force causes motion, we can see how voltage creates current, causing electrons to move in a circuit. So the force, voltage, causes motion, current. Force causes motion is power. Voltage causing current, of course, is going to be electrical power. The electrical power rate is the instantaneous rate at which work is done. It's going to be measured in watts, named after James Watt, who basically developed this correlation between force causing motion, voltage being force, electron flow, current being motion. Wattage is going to be greater when work is done in a short period of time than when the same amount of work is done in a longer period of time. Let me explain this for you briefly. An example of this would be the space shuttle. If you've seen the space shuttle before, you've got the two solid rocket boosters, and those are like bottle rockets. They like those things, and they're going for a ride. They don't put them out. They can't say, oh, we changed our mind. We're not going to launch anymore. They like those, and that space shuttle is going to go up. Okay? A tremendous amount of energy, a tremendous amount of energy is, is applied to the problem of getting the space shuttle in orbit in a very short period of time. If we spread that out over a much longer period of time, probably the space shuttle, all the energy consumed could power the city of Seattle for a considerable amount of time. But instead, they put it all and consume it in a very, very short period of time, and that's how it's utilized. The watt is a basic unit of power. It's equal to the voltage across the circuit multiplied by the current through the circuit. Watt represents the rate at which work is being done. P is equal to I times E. For power measured in watts is equal to current in amps times voltage measured in volts. You multiply that out and you end up with the power in watts. Circuit analysis to determine the power dissipated by a component, we take the voltage drop times the current. P is equal to I times E. The total power dissipated in a series or parallel circuit. Series or parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the power dissipated by the individual components. Okay? So this formula applies to series and parallel. This is the only formula you need to know about power. Power is always additive. It is always additive. We simply need to add it up. And that will give us our totals. The power dissipated in a circuit is often less than one watt. We're talking about electronic circuits here, like your cell phone. Okay? Your cell phone puts out a very, very small amount of, of energy, less than one watt. Typically, the values that you're going to see in electronic circuits are going to be the milliwatt, which is uh, 1,000 milliwatts is equal to one watt where one milliwatt is one one-thousandth of a watt. Or the microwatt. This is times 10 to the negative sixth power, 
One million microwatts equals one watt. One microwatt is one one millionth of a watt. So these are typically the values you're going to see consumed in small portable electronic devices, again, like your cell phone or your iPod. The big, biggest thing that the iPod does is feed your headset to play music to you. Other than that, the circuits are highly efficient, and not much energy is consumed or, or lost in uh, dissipation of power. Question, yes? This is, this is just to determine the, the power dissipation of a component. It's the same formula, right? The total power dissipated in series or parallel is equal to the sum of the power dissipated by the individual components. Again, this is saying that power is additive. If I've got two 60-watt light bulbs, it doesn't matter if they're connected in series with each other or parallel. 60 watts plus 60 watts is 120 watts. If I add another 60-watt light bulb, it's now 60 plus 60 plus 60. It's just like almost on, a, um, on an airplane. If you've got one engine on an airplane and then you add another engine to the airplane, what have you just done? You just added power. You just doubled, assuming it's the same size engine, you just doubled the amount of power that you have available. Unless you had one engine pointed this way and the other this way, that would be stupid, right? That wouldn't make sense. So normally you want to point both of them in the same direction and, you know, that's that way you can harness the power. So power is always additive. We always add power. Um, so the only thing we could ask you is, is mathematically, if, you know, there, there, there's no such, such thing as negative power. So it, just mathematically, we could say if we hate, had this much power and we took this much power away, what would you be left with? But that would only be in a, in a question. We would never in, in industry really see that, where we have anything taking power away. In summary, power is the rate at which energy is delivered to a circuit. Power is also the rate at which energy or heat is dissipated by the resistance in a circuit. Remember, this is important that you understand. Remember I said, what is it that has resistance? What has resistance? Everything. So when current encounters resistance, it's going to be dissipated in the form of heat. So when current encounters resistance, it generates heat. Power is going to be measured in watts. Power is the product, the product of current and voltage. When you multiply current times voltage, you end up with power. Any questions on anything in Chapter 7 as, it asso as it's uh, associated with power? Power. Okay, that concludes Chapter 7.